Hey guys, this is Krista from Level One Techs. Now, I've seen a lot of threads recently on the forums. A lot of you have mentioned, hey, I need help with my website. I need help with my app. I've got the, the programming part done, but I don't know how to make it look good. I don't know how to make it feel good to use. Now, the whole feel good to use part, we call that user experience design. And that basically, <sighs> no, basically, that means that you're trying to protect the user from themselves. Now, that might seem easy enough, you know, making something idiot proof. The universe is always building better idiots. And even small things like the way colors change on things can make a big difference in how things are used. Ah, ah, ah. No, no. This is drinkable. That's cleaning liquid. Uh, let's get started on some UX. All right, so we're taking a look at UX. Now, some other guides I've seen online have been, you know, they're very, very specific about, you know, you need to use this program, you need to do X, Y, Z, and if you don't use X, Y, Z, like, you're totally wrong, it's not right. Um, that's not how I practice, and I find that's not really helpful. So these are going to be more sort of general tips to get you started if you've never gone into this field before. One of the first things that I would recommend to someone starting out is to know your target audience. Now, some of you might just be doing a portfolio for yourselves, but that's something you should always ask your client. And even if you're doing a portfolio, you, know, you want to ask who's going to be looking at this and what are they going to be trying to get to? Uh, you know, are they young or old? Are they male or female? What do they like? What do they dislike? What makes sense for this user? Um, and the other thing I would always try and keep in the back of your mind is know that your user is probably an idiot. And I don't say that like in a mean way or like, you know, I am very smart and I am exempt from that. But uh, everyone's had that moment where you open a game or you open an app and then you like go to do something and then you can't figure out how to do it or it doesn't save your settings. Then you end up feeling either very dumb or you just end up feeling really frustrated and you close the app and never use it again. As the designer, you don't ever want that to happen. All right, so story time. Uh, luckily, this wasn't me who proposed this, but a client of mine who was working on a pitch for a metal shop. And they were really, really convinced that it would be a great idea to do a smartwatch app for the metal shop. Now, if you know anything about metal shops, you know wearing a watch in one is probably a really, 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 really good way to lose your hand. You cannot wear jewelry, you cannot wear watches, you cannot even have your hair down because it will just yank everything down into the machinery. Uh, so that's something to think about. You know, that's something where you need to know your target audience before you get going. Point two, always, always, always define your scope at the very beginning of the project. For those of you who are developers, that's probably not anything new to you. Um, for those of you who are new to this, Scope means basically what the site is and how it will function. That means, you know, knowing things like, does this site need a blog? Does this site need user registration? You know, do the users need to have profile pages? You know, do we need to have events? Do we need to do commerce? Those are all the kinds of questions you need to ask up front at the beginning of the project. Um, so you can make your engagement letter and things like that. Now beyond that, the UX designer's job is to figure out which of these things are most important to the end user. Not necessarily to the client, though sometimes they can overlap, but not always. But what is the user going to be looking for in this functionality? Um, sometimes a thing that I like to do is like sort of a, a trick is for really complicated sites, I'll ask the client to sit down and I want, I'll tell them, list out all the features that we've just talked about. Now I want you to put a number in front of each of these and tell me which ones are the most important. You know, list them one to whatever. Uh, one being the most important. That's a really good way for me to know as the designer, okay, they've said, you know, one and two are the most important things. These are the things they want the users to focus on. These are the things that need to go toward the top of the page. Point three, don't worry about what programs you're going to use and instead sketch on paper. This is a sort of a weird one, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, they'll post on the forums and be like, you know, should I use Photoshop? Should I use Sketch? Should I use XD? Should I use Balsamic? Those are all really great tools and I would recommend learning all of them. But I think one of the most valuable tools you have in your arsenal is really just a pencil and paper. It can be really tempting when you start off in Photoshop to want to do things very polished and then get really attached to an idea that maybe ultimately doesn't work. 
When you're working on paper though, you can work really fast. You know, you don't need to worry about making straight lines and like keeping things really crisp and clean. You can get lots of ideas out really quickly. And then, you know, if you spend five minutes on a bad idea, you know it's a bad idea quickly and then you just toss it away. Um, when I was in university, we had a professor who insisted that we cover every inch of paper. And, you know, if you got to a point where it was like, okay, I don't know what to do with this drawing, you could literally just tape more paper over it and keep drawing over it. Um, that kind of process helps you get to better compositions quickly. And when you're doing this as a job, being able to work quickly is a huge asset. And one of my final tips is to observe, reflect, and record the world around you. Now that sounds a little bit like hippie bullshit, and it, it kind of is, I'm, I'm willing to go there. But I think it's really valuable, hippie crap. Um, that's something I do every day, you know. I look at a lot of sites like Site Inspire, AWW Awards, those are great sites to get on the visual side to see things that are, you know, trends that are happening and things that you can use to improve your own work. One of the other things I like to do is whenever I download a new app, a new game, anything like that, I will sort of dissect it in my brain as I use it, you know. Is this easy to use? Uh, where would I put this thing if I wanted to do it myself, you know? Maybe the settings menu could go here or here or, you know, this affordance feels like it, it's not quite reading as a link. How would I change that? Those are all things that you need to get into the habit of doing as a UX designer. And that's kind of the last tip I have. For a lot of you, I know most of you are far more technical and, and maybe not thinking, well, this doesn't really apply to me. This isn't something that I do on a daily basis. Um, but I think anyone who's a builder, and I know a lot of you are, a lot of you are programmers, you can't really escape UX. Like Everyone's gonna be using it, everyone's gonna have to interact with it in some way. And knowing the bare minimum of like how to make it so it's not an absolute pain to use and makes the user remember, oh man, I am an idiot. You wanna make it seamless, you wanna make it smooth, and these are tips to help you be able to do that. Um, if you're looking for more tips like to keep going in this industry, I would recommend um, if you can, get an internship. That's a huge help. Even if it's just something where you're just doing like little projects, that's a big help. Build yourself a portfolio site. Don't use Squarespace, actually build it from the ground up. Um, that'll teach you a lot, not just about the design side and the UX side, but also just about web development in general. Um, one of the other things I recommend to you, once you've gotten a few projects under your belt, make a work binder. Now that doesn't have to be web-based, that can just be a PDF, but something I like to do in my practice every year is after we've done you know, years worth of projects, I will go back through and select some of my favorites and then I'll put them into a binder and explain, hey, this is what I liked about this, this is what I didn't. And then not only does that serve the purpose of being able to be sent out to a client, I can also use it as a way to say, okay, I'm noticing I'm using a lot of these same sort of things every year, maybe I should switch that up. Or you know, maybe the menus here weren't as good as they could be, or maybe the design wasn't as good. You know, Basically, it allows you to keep improving, and that's essentially what we want you to be able to do. We want you to keep improving, keep getting better. Um, if you guys have any tips or tricks that you use on your daily basis as a designer, let us know in the comments or let us know on forum.level1text.com. I'm Krista. Bye!